Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on our Roger 60-ton hydraulic press. This is one that I picked up uh, about a month or so ago uh, from out in Texas and been in the process of kind of restoring it, uh, refurbishing it, getting it back together. So far we have stripped all the paint off and got it painted, repainted. It was uh, getting kind of rusty crusty, paint paint was peeling off, so cosmetic for the most part. Uh, but we got all that knocked out. Uh, we pulled all the hydraulics off. Uh, previously, we tore down the hydraulic cylinder, rebuilt it. And today, what I want to do is get the hydraulic cylinder and the little crosshead that floats up on this top channel put back on this uh, so that we can hopefully get some hydraulics hooked up to it. Uh, not sure how far we're going to get in this video. A lot of it's going to depend on how things just kind of play out, but I am expecting later today uh, to get a power pack for this. So uh, I did a little bit of horse trading and uh, got a power pack and a guy's gonna be bringing that by the shop later today. Uh, won't be able to get it all plumbed up today, I know because I gotta get figure out what hydraulic hoses I need to have made and all that kind of stuff to hook it up. But uh, we may work on seeing about, once I get that power pack in hand, seeing what we need to do to kind of get it more or less attached to this so that it's kind of a one contained piece. So anyway, let's get in here and see where it takes us and see what we can get done. So this is, I'm gonna call it the crosshead. I don't know what the original name is, but this piece kind of mounts up on the bottom flanges of this I-beam. It's got wheels that lets it kind of roll back and forth where you can position it where you are. There's some set screws in here that tighten it, clamp it down. And the hydraulic cylinder actually screws into the center section and kind of goes up between uh, these upper uh, uh, pieces of channel iron. So need to get this back on here. I will say that um, this has been modified from the original. It's pretty much like the original was, but something had happened. The original side pieces are, were no longer on this. They had welded on or brazed on some plates that basically that the wheels ride on and the clamps work on. And there's a was a nut uh, welded on the top here. We had to cut that off to get it off. So I'm gonna have to weld that back on here once we kind of get it back in place. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and try to get it on. I'm gonna see if I can get it up there. We're just basically gonna pick it up and kind of hook it on the back, pull the front up. I got some clamps. I'm gonna clamp it in place to hold it in place and we'll get the wheels uh, reinstalled back in it. That's my game plan. Let's see how it goes. So we got it hooked in on the back there. It is kind of just hanging. And uh, got a clamp here, this little F clamp. And that should be good enough to just kind of hold it in place. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side where it's not hanging on that nut. So now I should be able to get the wheels uh, back in here where this thing will float back and forth. Let me work on that. So there's a bolt here that goes on the front. There's a uh, nut that bolts up on this and kind of jams it in place up against the, the plate. Actually, you know what? I think it's gonna have to go right in next to it. Maybe the two jams are on the outside. I'll put my wheel in here. It's got to come up a little bit. Hmm, my holes aren't lining up and I mean, that's pretty much flush with the bottom here. 
I don't know what's going on. Let me let me study this a minute. All right, I think we got this figured out. Um, when I took this apart, these flanges were kind of tilted out and it, my OCD kind of kicked into gear and it bothered me. I wanted to straighten them up, so I took a clamp and pulled them back in. Well, in order for these wheels to line up, they have to be out a little bit. So I took a big long adjustable wrench and put on this and got some uh, leverage and bent them back out again. And now it appears to be working. So. We're gonna put this on and I can tell too that, yeah, the wheel was right up against it. You can see the wear mark in it, but we'll put that in there. It goes right up in. And then we have the two nuts on the back that serve the purpose of a jam nut. You don't want this, you want that wheel to, to rotate. So you don't want them like right up on it, but the jam nut keeps them from kind of backing off. So you wanna have a little bit of, a little bit of play in there. See, we'll tighten it up and back it off just a little bit. And then I'll put the other nut right up against that one and we'll jam them together. Let me go grab uh, another wrench where I can do that. So I've got a thin wrench I'm gonna put on the inside one and a regular wrench on the outside one. And we'll just jam these together and uh, that wheel will easily turn in there. So I think we got that one installed. We need to do the same thing over here. I need to drop this clamp off and do that one. Let's uh, get all these put on and see if it'll, it'll slide like it's supposed to. So if you want to know how to drive me batty, I'm going to show you how to drive me batty because this, this just aggravates me, but we got it going. So number one, I got it in here. It's rolling back and forth like it needs to be. But on the front side here, you know, we had to actually bend the plate out to get it where the wheels would just barely fit in there. There's hardly any gap in here at all. You go on the other side and without bending, having to do anything to the plate, there's a quarter of an inch gap in there. Now that drives me crazy. And I'm sitting here looking at it and what do I do? I mean, I could come in here and cut these plates off and fix it back where it's right. Or I can just, let it slide, let it roll. And as much as I hate to do it, I think that's what I'm going to do. I mean, there's a, a clamp we're gonna be putting on here. I've already got the one installed on the other side. When, when you tighten that up, in fact, let me just do it and you can kind of see it happening. Um, you'll see the clamp here in a minute, but when you clamp this together, it pulls that gap out. It gets it up there where it needs to be. Now the wheels are off up here by a quarter of an inch, no big deal, but, Again, just wasn't done right to begin with, but I don't think I'm, it's the other side of the coin has been working for decades like this and you know, it, it functions just fine. It's just aggravating. Anyway, there you go. How to, how to make me want to pull my hair out. Uh, we're going to get the nut up here so we can put the clamp on this side. I'm going to weld it in place and uh, we should have this part installed. Let me uh, get that ready to roll. All right, slight change in plan here, uh, nothing major. What I ended up doing guys is I took this off and I flipped it around. So this is the side that was on the back. This is the side that's got the gap in it. And the side that's tight and the side that has that bent up piece on there that I don't really like the way it looks, it's now on the back of the press. It's still there, but I don't see it. Makes me feel a little bit better. Um, the other thing I decided to do was because the other side is as tight as it is, I mean, it'll slide, it'll, it'll roll just fine, but there's hardly any gap back there. Uh, I'm not gonna bother putting a set screw on the back side because in reality, I'm probably not gonna go around there and tighten it up most of the time anyway, because it's just inconvenient. I'll just have the one on the front. And with this one being the one that has the gap in there, when I tighten this up, it will pull that gap out just fine and it will lock this up in place and of course when you start pressing on it it's going to jam up anyway so i mean it's not like it's a big issue once once you got pressure on it, it's just going to keep the cylinder from moving around uh, once you get pressure on it it's locked so anyway that's kind of my game plan uh, and by not putting that screw on the other side 
Uh, if I ever need to take this off again, I don't have to get the zip wheel out, cut it off like I did last time. It will make it much easier to take back apart should I ever have to down the road. That's my thinking and that's what we're gonna do. Let's see about getting the cylinder put in there. I think we're gonna go back to the back shop where I got the gantry crane where I can pick that thing up and not have to manhandle it. So uh, we'll get some things shift around and see if we can get that cylinder uh, installed back in here. All right, there was a threaded hole in the top of the cylinder. I put an eye bolt in there. And we are lifting this cylinder up nice and easy using my gantry crane, making easy work of this. So if you look right here, there's a threaded section that threads into this bottom piece that we just put on. So hopefully we can just drop it in place and spin it in place and get it back and installed where it needs to go. I think I'm going to have just enough clearance up top to get this in. It's got a screwdriver through the eye bolt up top. If I can get a little uh, leverage on the cylinder. And we're just going to spin it down as far as I can uh, get it to turn. And that's right where I want it. I want this uh, fitting facing straight in that direction, more or less. And that feels like it's bottomed out. So I think we got it done there. Right down here underneath the bottom, there's a little set screw that goes up against the, the cylinder in there that basically just kind of keeps that from unscrewing. And I'm going to tighten that up on there and that should lock that in place. Our cylinder is installed. That's got our uh, cylinder back mounted on there. It uh, moves around nicely. We can lock it down with our clamp on the front. Um, yeah, this is coming along nice. So up next, we need to figure out the hydraulics on this. Like I mentioned before, I've got a uh, electric powered hydraulic pump that um, should work fine with this press. I think it's gonna be a little slow uh, based on the specs, but the price was right on it. I was able to do some horse trading and uh, get that in the shop. It's basically a brand new pump. I'm gonna be getting it in a little bit later this afternoon. So you'll probably see it in this video coming up soon. But uh, we need to figure out getting all that plumbed up and how we're gonna mount that on here. And between that and the only other thing I gotta worry about that I can think of off the top of my head is I've gotta get the um, winch system to raise and lower the, the table here. Um, I, there was a kind of a boat winch thing on here with some cables and we're going to probably go back with a similar setup, but I'm going to put some new equipment on here. I got to figure all that out as well, but coming along, uh, let's wait until we get our power pack in here and we'll go from there, see where we need to, what we need to do. 
Well, here it is. My power pack has uh, been dropped off here at the house. And uh, this is what we're gonna be powering the hydraulic system with on this press. This is made by BVA Hydraulics. I uh, don't know much about the company. Uh, from what I can gather, I think this is a, it's a fairly good quality uh, pump. I, I know I looked up what they cost new and uh, I can tell you they're not cheap by any means. Um, and hopefully this will, this will do me well. And again, the story on this one is, is that this was actually bought by a company not far from me. And a couple of weeks ago, they had reached out to me. They were needing to borrow a uh, power scraper. They were working on a piece of machinery in their plant. And they had a guy there that uh, knows how to scrape, but didn't have the tools and found out that I had some equipment and I was gonna rent them a uh, power scraper and stuff to do the job. And when he came by to pick up, he saw that we were working on the press. He's like, you know, we got a, we got a, a pump down there at the plant that we, and they bought this to go on a, I think he said a metal shear or anyway, some type of, of hydraulic equipment they had in their plant. And it worked fine, but it was too slow. And they ended up getting a different model that, that had a little bit faster uh, uh, pumping rate in it. And this one was just sitting on the shelf. They weren't using it. So they ended up basically trading me uh, this pump that was paid for and not being used. Uh, and in return, they're, they're using some of my scraping equipment. So anyway, that's how this kind of all came out. So it worked out really good for me. And um, I think that based on the flow rate and stuff, it's probably gonna be pressing pretty slow on this press, but it will be pressing at maximum capacity. And uh, you know, I'm not worried about a super fast cycle. At least I say I'm not. I guess if I, we may determine differently once we get it all going, but I, I'm not too worried if it's pressing slow. I usually wanna press slow. So uh, that's, I don't think that's gonna be a major problem. We'll see. Uh, but now the, ch the challenge is we need to basically get this thing hooked up. So the maximum working pressure on this is 10,000 PSI. That is also the maximum working pressure on the cylinder up here. And at 10,000 PSI, that's where we get the 60 tons uh, on this cylinder. So it basically is matched perfectly for this press. Uh, I'm not gonna have to worry about doing any bleed offs and stuff to make sure I'm not putting too much pressure on there. I am going to have to make sure that my plumbing to this, hydraulic hoses and all that, fittings, everything else is rated for 10,000 PSI. So uh, we're gonna be sourcing all that out here in a little bit. So where are we at now? What can I do today? I need to get this thing basically mounted over here on the press. And um, I think I got a plan, game plan on, on what we're gonna do. So let me show you that real quick. So over here on the side of my press, there's a bracket. This is where the hand pump was located on the press originally. And um, I think we can use this bracket to hold the, the pump and everything. Now, here's kind of the crazy thing. So when the guys were in here a couple of weeks ago and they were cleaning this thing up, they actually had started zip wheeling this bracket off because they told me I needed to move it up higher so that I could get my pump when I did it uh, where the controls were up higher and I'm like no I don't think so and I actually welded it back on well I should have listened to them um, in my mind I was thinking about having a pump down here and uh, having a hose that came up to a controller up higher uh, and it would have in, in my mind it would have worked out but with the pump I've got the the controller is built right into the pump that's not like I can mount it up someplace else so it's gonna make sense to raise this up to get the handle. I don't wanna to have to bend down the floor to, to control it. I want it to be up at a higher level. So should have listened to them. How many times has my wife told me that? Should have listened to me, dear. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're gonna come in here, cut this thing off. I'm gonna re-weld it up higher. I think as far as a mounting bracket or whatever, there is no mounting holes in this, but I think I'm just gonna, take some angle iron and kind of make a tray that this thing just kind of sits down into and it captures it and it just sits down in there. And uh, if I ever need to disconnect it, it's, it, you can just pick it up. Gravity will hold it in place just fine. Um, again, we got to figure out all the plumbing and all that. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, we'll take care of that a little bit later on. Right now, we just need to get it where it's going to live. So 
I'm going to get in here and zip this thing off and see if we can get it re-welded. We'll have to touch up our paint when we're done, but that's no big deal at all. So there we go. Let's get her done. Got a cutoff wheel here. Let's go see if we can get in here and cut that off. We've successfully got this uh, bracket cut off. I've cleaned it up, done a few little things to it, uh, and it's ready to weld back on. And I have determined where it needs to be, which is right here. I got it clamped in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack it in, and then we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the, the main frame. Let's uh, knock it out here. Should hold it in place. Should be able to take my clamp out of there now. Finish welding this in place. Let me start by just tacking the bottom of these so it doesn't move on me. And we're going to be making them runny mess. Probably going to have to kind of weld and stop and weld and stop. I'm not that good at welding uphill like this. Not pretty, but the grinder will take care of that. We got our bracket mounted here um, and it's at a good height. That's right there where my hand naturally goes to control things. So uh, I think that's gonna be just where we need it. Um, next thing I need to do is build a little tray for this to set down in and uh, attach that to the press so that we can, uh, like I so said, just have a little, a little place to set so I need to see if I can round up some angle iron and uh, make that. I'm not sure if I got any of the right size. I may have to run to town and get some. So uh, let's see what we can do there. I've got some eighth inch thick by inch and a quarter angle iron and uh, we're gonna be making the tray out of that. Need two sides 12, about 12 and a half inch, by about eight and a half inch to make it out of. And I'm over at my marble saw. I got it blade tilted down to 45 degrees so that I can cut these uh, angles kind of like that to build a tray out of. So we're just over here doing that right now. Just uh, already cut one. Just cutting a little corner out of it there. I'm going to uh, measure my 12 and a half inches that I need here. And to cut the other direction, I'm gonna have to actually come in from this side. And I'll get my blade lined up here. About right there. And we'll make another cut. Same process, I'm gonna cut my two uh, 
eight and a half inch sides and we should be able to go weld that tray together. I think we're ready to weld this up. I'm using um, one of these fireball tool. I think that's what they call their mega square, but I like this. It has it where you can put it on the outside of a 90 degree um, and come in here and set this up. So we're gonna, I'm gonna tack it in uh, on all four corners. And uh, once I get it tacked together, we'll uh, weld this little tray together and hopefully everything will just fit right down in there. I'm, I know I'm gonna have to make a little notch for the drain, but we'll worry about that in a minute. I just wanna tack these together on the corners. Get everything set up square. Let's see here. And both of these sides should this side should be square. This side is square over here. So we're gonna go ahead and just tack them both. over I want to do most of my welding on the bottom so I don't have to grind a bead out down in on the inside so we'll just go ahead and do these real quick Let's look at something Guys, I just cut that notch out. I took a uh, jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, kind of cut out a, an arc, and then took a die grinder and cleaned it up. I did that off camera. What I want to do now is I just want to actually weld this in place. I kind of got it positioned where I want. I'm going to, again, tack it along the back back here, and then we'll weld it down. And uh, this tray should hold the, hold the pump unit just fine. Now let's see how this thing fits. Look at there. Got a little rock in it. See if I can knock these welds down a little bit and see if that'll sit flatter. Look at that. That's much, much better. All right. I think I can live with that. Well, here we go with everything mounted. I got everything painted. Uh, let this dry overnight. Here's the uh, control box or the power pack mounted over here on it. I uh, did make a couple little changes to this. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, I think we are ready to get this thing plumbed up uh, so that we can try it out, see how it works. So first thing I did was put a knob on this. Um, when I got it, it was missing the little knob on the end. And I dug around in my cabinet and I found this, uh, looks like probably a homemade aluminum knob that someone had made and it was the right size to screw right up on there. So um, fix that problem. I was just gonna order something from MasterCard or something, but like I said, when I found I had that already, easy fix. The other thing was up here on the, uh, this little piece here with the switch in it to turn things on and off. It was turned where the switch was in the back and the power cord was coming out the front. Uh, and since this is the working side that we'll be working from, I just 
unbolted this, flipped it 180 degrees, and uh, put it back on there. No big deal at all. Now I have my switch on the front. Uh, my power cord comes out the back. Uh, I do have a hole here in this, and I got to get a uh, something to plug that up. I don't have anything in my electrical um, stuff that size, but that should be easy enough to to, to take care of. Um, he told me, the guy I got this from told me they had wired in a foot switch to this where you basically had to have your foot on the foot switch in order to operate it. And of course they took that out. So um, we'll just blank over that. And I think we'll be ready to roll on this thing. But like I said, it is ready for hydraulic fluid. Now this is a double acting cylinder or double acting pump. So depending on which way you go, I'm assuming if you go this way, it opens this valve. If you go this way, it opens this valve. We'll have to confirm that. And this is for pushing the cylinder up and down. Now in my case with a spring return on it, we'll only be using one side. The other side will just stay plugged up. Um, just won't use it. So it'll be, you'll be impressing. Then that right there, when you go to the center, it's just going to release the pressure because there is a spring return on it. At least that's how I think it's gonna work. So, all right. Um, like I said, next step for me is to do some homework, figure out my, my plumbing, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, guys, I think that's going to be a wrap on this video. Uh, we have got things knocked out here that we uh, set out to do. We got our hydraulic ram mounted over here, the cylinder. We got the power pack mounted. We got the controls things at a level where it's going to be helpful to use. Uh, like I said, we've still got to do our plumbing and the raising and lowering of the table, but getting this thing close to being finished. I've got a couple of jobs uh, lined up that I need to use this for. So it is kind of a priority in my shop and uh, cosmetically it looks great. I'm anxious to see how it's going to work and function in the real world, but there, I don't see any reason why this press uh, isn't going to suit my needs. Guys, with that, we're going to sign off. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. They really help feed the algorithms over on YouTube and help get my, my channel and my site out there uh, in front of other people where we can grow. Uh, big, huge thank you to everybody who supports the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, etc. We could not take the time to do the videos that we do without your help. And uh, guys, with that, we are going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.